So we're here with Dr. Katz at Glaucoma 360, who presented the Schaefer Hetherington Haskins lecture today. Your talk was entitled Screening for Glaucoma New Strategies. Could you elaborate a little bit more on, on your presentation? Sure. Uh, glaucoma is a pretty common disorder in our country, um, and it's a serious disease that can lead to blindness. In fact, it's uh, the third leading cause of irreversible blindness uh, in the United States. Uh, number one amongst African Americans and Latinos. Um, and so we have excellent treatments for it, uh, both medically, laser, and surgically. Mm -hmm. The trick is you have to catch patients at an early stage because it's not reversible. And unfortunately, a lot of people get caught at a late stage of disease. And um, in underserved communities, that's especially the case. And so uh, my, my talk today was really directed at trying to find novel ways of reaching that population that is the greatest risk uh, and identifying them and trying to get them into a reasonable treatment program. Mm -hmm. Okay, Could, what are some specific ways that um, you are reaching out to these underserved patients? So previous strategies involve screening uh, for the disease by checking the pressure and, and examining the patient and asking them to come back uh, for follow-up. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of these patients, in fact, maybe upwards of 80% don't come back even if they're identified as having the disease. So we had two different strategies. The first one was to use a mobile office, in essence. So we went into the community uh, where patients were, community centers, churches, and we set up our screening there and we took our entire team, all our equipment, and when we diagnosed the disease and we initiated treatment right there and followed up with them in the center where we examined them and made the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, and in the hopes that once they start getting treated, then they'll be incorporated into the local um, uh, healthcare system. Mm -hmm. The second project really involved um, trying to tap into patients who are going to primary care offices. So these are not ophthalmology doctors, they're uh, internists and family mm -hmm. practitioners that are caring for diabetics, hypertensives. And, and if we identify people that are at high risk in, in those offices, we ask them if they would participate in the screening program. Mm -hmm. And we would go and set up uh, equipment to do certain measurements, including photography of the nerve, measuring the pressure, getting some history, and that was transmitted to an office at Wells Eye Hospital, where I'm based, with telemetry, and we would have access to all that information at our hospital, and we would make a determination based on that information whether that patient needed to have mm -hmm. a confirmatory diagnostic, diagnostic evaluation. If they were in that category where we thought they had real disease, whether it's glaucoma or even diabetic retinopathy, some other eye disease, we would send our mobile team to the primary care office on a specific day to examine that population that we thought was uh, at risk for glaucoma or had glaucoma or some other eye disease. And if we confirmed the diagnosis at that point, mm -hmm. then we would then get them into the healthcare system with local ophthalmologists in the area. So those were kind of our uh, initiatives with uh, public health and screening mm -hmm. and trying to identify patients with glaucoma. Who are, who are not being cared for have yet to be diagnosed. Okay. I believe you also offered some examples of other community outreach uh, programs where, where this is being tried or explored. Yeah, you know, there are slightly different variations of, uh, of, of our approach. Uh, so, for example, in Atlanta, uh, there's approach to the VA system where they're uh, conducting telemedicine kind of evaluation of patients and other clinics that are hard to uh, access for them that are rural areas, for example, that have doctors there. Um, and that's been very successful in identifying patients with glaucoma. There's another program in Baltimore also doing community screening uh, and coupling that with giving uh, uh, free eyeglasses and they've been very successful identifying glaucoma patients through that screening program. And uh, down in Alabama, they've also done a program through uh, optometrists based in Walmart, um, trying to partner with them to identify uh, patients that are uh, at risk for glaucoma or actually do have glaucoma. So yeah, there's a, a, certainly a need and people are trying very hard to identify this population. 
so they can get adequate care um, out there because our our estimates right now are that 50 to 75 percent of people that have glaucoma in our country have yet to be diagnosed. These are all very important initiatives. So what would be the next step? Where do you, where do you see I next think, steps for us? you know, learning from what we've done, I think uh, none of our systems are perfect. Uh, we're trying to find out what seems to work, what gives us better follow-up. So for example, in our telemedicine follow-up program, uh, two-thirds of the patients really followed up with their, with their appointments as scheduled, uh, which is vastly better than the typical 20% that follow up. Mm -hmm. So learn, you know, learning how uh, things work, uh, we're going to try to incorporate that in some way that it can be generalizable across the country. Um, the Centers for Disease Control, uh, which funded our trials, uh, uh, understands the need and, and they're very uh, enthusiastic and supportive of trying to get something that can be used in other centers, other cities, rural areas that can uh, reach out and capture the patients that uh, need help.